Just one small change made my fast API code 10 times cleaner and easier to maintain. Before I used to finish building something, look back at the code and feel like it wasn't professional enough. I wasn't writing bad code, but it wasn't clean and I knew there was probably a better way of doing things. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can improve your code quality, your code architecture and level up your entire application. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over 10 years of experience and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. And just before we dive in, this video is sponsored by CodeRabbit. They reached out to show me their automated code reviews and all I can say is that it is changing how I work. With that, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so I already have a product that is a clean architecture for a fast API application. So we have source and then we have off for authentication, a database, entities, to dos, users, and a whole bunch of tests. So if we go ahead and just say like pi test to get it going, we can see that it's going to go ahead and run all of these end to end tests and unit tests to make sure that the application is written well and all the tests are passing. Now, what we want to do here is go ahead and create a new feature for our application. And the new feature we're going to add is a soft delete mechanism. So instead of deleting like a to do completely from the database, we're going to implement a history database, which keeps all the history of all the to do's. We're going to have a large language model, implement the feature, and then we're going to have code rabbit review the code quality of the change and give us recommendations throughout our development. So to start, we can talk about like, what is code rabbit? Well, code rabbit will cut the code review times and bugs in half instantly. It's a really cool product that you can implement into your IDE and you can implement in GitHub or whatever you're using for your remote repository. And during pull requests, it's going to automatically look through all the code changes that you're implementing in your pull request to improve code quality and find areas that can be improved. And we're going to implement this all right here. So go ahead and just create a new free trial. If you haven't already, I'm going to log in through my GitHub account. And here we can select the repository from our GitHub. And I've already pushed the project that we're using for this video and called it Code Rabbit Repository. We want to make sure we add it here. And then on your repository screen, you can see Code Rabbit repo. And that's all you have to do to get Code Rabbit completely configured into your GitHub environment. Now let's go back into your IDE. And what we can do here is go over to extensions. And I'm going to type in Code Rabbit. I'm going to say install. We're installing Code Rabbit, and that's really all you need to do. Once you do that, you're gonna have a new drop down that says Code Rabbit, where we are on our account pro, and it's going to start noticing all the changes that we do. So I'm gonna create a new branch that is for our history. So once we do that, we can see that the Code Rabbit automatically changes our feature slash history to our main branch to notice the code review changes. And then inside here, I'm going to open up my LLM. I'm going to say I want to grab the entire folder of our code rabbit project, which is our entire project right here. And I'm going to say, I want you to add me a new feature without using Olympic. I simply want you to add a new ability for our delete endpoints. I no longer want to actually delete completely from the system. I want to implement a soft delete where we remove the record from our database table, but add the record to a new database called history, which keeps track of all the history of all deleted to do's and who they belong to when implemented add all the tests to make sure the application works. All right, let's go ahead and send that to our LLM. And it's going to go through and start reading all the code that we need. And it's going to start implementing what it believes is the changes that is needed for this to be successful. All right, so it's saying it made all the changes. Let's go ahead and just say accept all Let's do a pie test to make sure everything works correctly or at least we have our tests passing. That's a good sign of something passing. Well, we can see there's one failure right here in our end to end for our test to do's endpoints. So we have five errors and one failure. Let's go ahead and just grab this and just copy and paste some of this into our terminal. Please fix these tests. I'm going to add that in here. And while that's adding, we can go to our code rabbit and it'll tell us the changes that are happening in real time. Similar to like how our Git will tell us our changes between our original and our old code rabbit will do something similar where it'll tell you the changes that are happening. Now, what we can do is click this review all changes. Now, this will make code rabbit go through all of our changes to find areas to improve code quality or find areas to where just bad practices are implemented. Now, after we get this ran through, I'm going to go ahead and accept all the changes and then we're going to have code rabbit review all these changes as well. All right. So it gave us a whole bunch more changes. Let's go ahead and say accept all. And now we have nine files changed. And now I'm going to say pie test. 
All right, so all the tests passed. Let's go over to Code Rabbit and say review all changes. Now this is gonna set up, analyze all of our changes, and it's going to be reviewing the files and give us some coding techniques or improvements that it believes are the best for us to implement within our project. And if we hover over the files, we can see that they each one say they are under review. And here we can see there's no issues detected in this review. You're good to go. And there are some nitpicks where it just kind of tells you about maybe some nitpicks that we can implement. But everything looks good when we're doing this, which is great. And that's all reviewed by Code Rabbit inside our IDE. And it's just telling us about some changes that we can implement. Now what I'm going to say is do the same history implementation for users. Before I go ahead, I'm gonna say git add, and I'm just going to add this all to a commit. And I'm just gonna say to do history. And now we're gonna say do the same thing for the history implementation for users. All right, and now after that, I'm just gonna say accept all. We're not even gonna look at the code quite yet. Now let's go ahead and just say PyTest, make sure everything works as expected. All the tests pass, and this time I'm gonna say Go ahead and just say git at all. We're gonna git commit and say uh, to do, we'll call it to do and user history. And now if you say git push, it's gonna say that doesn't exist and you need to create an upstream. So we can just copy that and create a new PR. We get rid of this. It says create a new pull request by just clicking on this button. We're gonna call this feature to do and user history. I spelled feature wrong. And if we scroll down, we can see all the code changes that happened. There is 298 additions, 68 deletions, and 30 file changes. Now let's go all at the top and say create pull request. Now what's nice about team environments, enterprise applications, or even if you're a sole person by themselves, when I created this PR before merging into our main branch, we have Code Rabbit automatically running. So it says BRP inventing the time machine to fix your code before you wrote it. And then it gives us some tips. But we can see that Code Rabbit is going through our entire code changes right now to try and find code quality changes, bugs, anything that it can to help improve your product. I mean, this thing is super powerful. So I'm going to come back once this review is complete. All right, and then once it's complete, CodeRabbit gives us a ton of information. So there's some new features, introduce a soft deletion for to-dos and users, allowing items to be marked as deleted without permanent removal, added some new endpoints for history retrieval, bugs, fixes, and tests. And this is the summary by CodeRabbit. It'll tell us all the files that changed in the change summary and gives us our sequence diagrams. Now, this is really sweet. This doesn't just improve this one PR, but it improves your entire application by keeping a history inside your commits and inside your pull requests of entire diagrams and reasons to why they were even implemented. And here we can kind of go through it. So right here we can see there's some nitpicks on this file where it's telling us um, use more Pythonic is not operator for Boolean instead of using that. It's telling us some nitpicks over here. Let's move on from the nitpicks and see if there's any big suggestions. So right here we have a refactor suggestion. Um, consider preserving original users created at timestamp. Okay. And what we can see is the nitpick is right here, but the refactor suggestion actually gives you a prompt for AI agent where it tells you exactly where it wants you to fix the change and telling the LLM how to fix it. So let's go ahead and just copy this and let's go back into our product. And I'm just gonna paste this right inside. I'm just gonna say user.py and I'm just gonna physically add user.py right here. And I'm going to continue on with the prompt that Code Rabbit gave us. And we can see that the LLM is saying, you're absolutely right, I need to fix the foreign key constraint. That's what Code Rabbit found and our LLM is going to implement this. So I added the change. Let's go ahead and say PyTest to make sure all the tests still pass. We can go ahead and just add this change. And I'm gonna call this the Code Rabbit change fix. We can push that change. It's now gonna push it back to our PR. If we refresh, we can see that this is now considered outdated because um, of the new change. And what's cool, we can say resolve conversation because this is going to be complete. But another thing that we can do here 
is refactor suggestion. It's telling us a new factor suggestion. We can say, why should we implement this? I'd rather keep it how it is. And that's just because it's telling us not to use a default value of Langchain, trying to preserve the original user's timestamp. What we can do is just add a comment to our PR comment and CodeRabbit will respond to us automatically. We can see, that, ooh, it has some eyes. That's CodeRabbit acknowledging that you gave it a response and it's gonna go through and try and find, um, it's gonna answer the question of why should we implement this? I'd rather keep it how it is. And then I refresh and it said, you're right to question this. Both approaches have merit depending on your use cases. You can have the history of when we moved it over to the history table, or we can have like the history of like when the user was created. It tells us what we want. I'm just gonna say resolve conversation and we can say merge pull request. And now boom, we have that merge into our main branch. So now if we come back into our main and I say git checkout main, git pool, we now have all the new code changes that we just implemented with the code quality from CodeRabbit going through and making sure everything looks great. So this is definitely something I'm gonna be implementing in my future projects. It just helps so much with code quality and readability and maintainability, which you need as a developer and you also need when using LLMs and LLMs are gonna be a, a very strong tool in the future of software development. So I'm gonna be using CodeRabbit. I loved using it, awesome product. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.